Hi there, welcome to SV Med Lectures. Today we'll be taking a look at blood composition as well as plasma composition. So let's get started. So, what is blood made of? Blood is made up of four main components. They are as follows red blood cells, abbreviated as RBCs, otherwise known as erythrocytes, white blood cells, abbreviated as WBCs, otherwise known as leukocytes, platelets, otherwise known as thrombocytes, and lastly, plasma. 45% of the blood volume consists of the cellular components, white red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The remaining 55% accounts for plasma. If you centrifuge a tube of blood, the cells and the plasma separate to, for, to form distinct layers as depicted in this picture right here. So when centrifuged, the red blood cells are the heaviest and land at the bottom of the tube. The plasma is a component that is found at the top of the centrifuge tube of blood. And what we have in the middle here is the buffy coat, which consists of the white blood cells and the platelets. The relative proportions in the blood are as follows and uh, can be seen on this side here. So plasma accounts for 55% of the blood volume. White blood cells and platelets, uh, termed uh, the buffy coat, account for less than 1% of the blood volume. Lastly, the uh, red blood cells account for 45% of the blood volume. So let me ask you a question to see if you can remember. What are the four main components of blood? If you answered red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma, then you are correct. Do you remember what each of these account for in the blood volume? So, Red blood cells account for 45% of the blood volume. Plasma accounts for approximately 55% of the blood volume. Lastly, the buffy coat, which consists of platelets and white blood cells, constitutes less than 1% of the blood volume. So now let's take a look at plasma. Like I said, plasma accounts for approximately 55% of the blood volume. It is a straw-colored liquid. Here right uh, in your lower right corner, this is what we mean by straw color. Plasma is composed of approximately 92% water, and it surrounds all the other cellular components such as red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets to help them carry them uh, throughout the body. The high water content encourages smooth blood flow and decreases the blood's viscosity or thickness and severe dehydration can deplete this plasma's water, causing a variety of problems such as hypotension and electrolyte imbalances. So, we'll be taking a look at plasma composition. Despite being mostly water, blood plasma also contains proteins and dissolved salts. Approximately 7% of the plasma consists of proteins, and 1% consists of inorganic salts such as sodium, potassium, calcium, carbonate, and phosphate. So just down here, we see that plasma contains 92% water, 7% proteins, approximately 1% of salts. So when taking a look at the proteins found in plasma, there are three important types. Albumin, aminoglobulins, also known as antibodies, as well as fibrinogens. The majority of the protein portion of the plasma is albumin, which allows plasma to be a key regulator of blood osmolality. Albumin concentration is the main force drawing water from the tissues into uh, the blood. So when albumin is found um, in the blood vessels, it, it um, exerts an oncotic pressure, drawing water from the tissues into the blood vessel. And albumin is also an important carrier protein for calcium, hormones, and drugs. The next uh, protein component is immunoglobulins, otherwise known as antibodies, that can help your body in fight infections. And um, 
the last component, uh, last plasma component, is um, the clotting factors, um, that being of fibrinogen. So just to recap, the proteins found in plasma is albumin, aminoglobulins, and fibrinogens. So let's recap. What are the three important proteins found in plasma? If you said albumin, aminoglobulins, and fibrinogens, then you are correct. Lastly, let's look at the plasma functions. So um, in uh, normal physiology, plasma helps the body maintain its uh, blood pressure and assists in regulating blood, body temperature. Clinically, um, products can be prepared from plasma and can be transfused to help save lives. For example, FFP, otherwise known as fresh frozen plasma, can be given to patients who experience traumatic blood loss to help stop bleeding and maintain blood pressure. Here, this is fresh frozen plasma that uh, you see in this image right here. So that's the end of the lecture. I wish you good luck with all your studies, best of luck. And remember to never give up, no matter what the situation is right now, things will always get better. Just keep, um, just keep going. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for listening. Bye.